Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Cabin Crew Talk Show. Today my guest is Miss Ivana, she is from Bosnia and she works as a cabin crew in Plynas. Plynas is a domestic and international low-cost airline of Saudi Arabia. So you will be able to hear her experience about working in Plynas and living in Saudi Arabia. Take a look and I hope you will enjoy. Cabin crew, take your seats for takeoff. Hello, guys, welcome to a new episode of Cabin Crew Talk Show. Today, my guest is Miss Ivana. Hi, Ivana. Hi, Mina, nice to see you again. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you for Thank you for accepting my invitation. Thank you for your time. And as I know, you're having standby now, right? You are at home yes. <laughs> and waiting to get pulled or not to get pulled. Not to get pulled. I prefer my rest today. So let's. <laughs> okay. So Ivana, she is coming from Bosnia, and she is working as a flight attendant in uh, Flynas. That's the airline in uh, Saudi Arabia. So Ivana, please, you can introduce yourself. You can tell something about your background. Where are you coming from? What did you work? What did you study? And then about cabin crew job. Yeah, first of all, thank you for inviting me because I watched all of your recent video and I really liked them. And I think this is really a good idea. What are you doing? So thank people you. worldwide can know what company are they going to go, what company they should consider uh, when they want to uh, work like a cabin crew. Okay, as you already said, my name is Ivana. I come from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm 27 years old. Before this cabin crew job, I was studying uh, logopedy, audiology, and speech therapy back in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I was working as a journalist as well for one uh, portal in my city. Uh, I was working in the Germany as well for one time, and then I came to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> That's Such like a short big change. <laughs> <laughs> yes, big change. So what did you work in Germany? Uh, I worked in Germany like a nurse one time. Uh -huh. yeah. So you I had like a um, high school in uh, I medicine finished gymnasium and then later on I finished uh, medical as well. Wow, so many things. <laughs> Well. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Like two high schools and then uh, I, I don't think this uh, logopedic faculty is easy, right? It's really hard because yeah. it's a part of the uh, medicine faculty in my country. So it's really hard. Like it's five years and then you have specialization. So Currently, it's on hold still, so we will see what life brings. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. So, how old were you when you decided to apply for a crew job? Uh, I was 22. Mm -hmm. And that was... Uh, that same... Yes, yes, please. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> Sorry. Go, go, go first, go first. Uh, that was the first time for you to apply for any cabin crew job, like... Yes. And that was like totally, I didn't want it to apply. To be honest, I always liked that job as most of us girls. We always watch movies and we like the uniforms and the hats and they're walking in the aisle, chilling, killing, like Victoria's <laughs> Secret models. It was cool to me and it was attractive and it was one part of the dream. But did I ever thought I'm going to become cabin crew? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. All of us, we had the dream. <laughs> Okay, so um, when you decided to apply for Flynas, uh, what was the procedure? Like they did recruitment in Bosnia or? Yes, and that was the first time that they did rec uh, recruitment in Bosnia. 
my friend, she told me uh, there is, I saw online, they published that they are searching for flight attendants in one company. She told me, let's send here because she wanted to go more. And when I saw that interview day, like open day, you, it was invitation uh, and open day. So it was both uh -huh. like, because usually our company has invitation only or open day. But uh -huh. in this case, we had an invitation and open day together. Uh -huh. So they said, I sent my email, like, just like a joke, because I, I'm telling you, I never thought that something like this will happen. And she told me, I need someone to go with me. So we send the CV. After one week, we get the response to come with our CVs, to come to have interview and test. But when I saw it was the day when I supposed to go to Germany. Ah, really? So, yeah, that was the same day. Like, the interview is at 10 in the morning, and my flight goes at 2 in the afternoon. And you know how most of the open days, they really last long because a lot of people apply. Yeah, and like everything. all so afternoon. I said, okay, I'm going to go support you because I, I know I, I was not uh, able to catch it. So I went with her. We came there. We took our numbers. And it, thank God, it was not that really big group. It was like 50 girls from Bosnia. Uh -huh. Five zero, group, right? The, yes. Later 50. on, they organized us in the group 50, 50, 50. Mm -hmm. So first, we got introduction about the company. Uh, what is their goals? What they want to achieve in the future years? What is destination, fleets, and everything? After that, we had English test. Um, English test, it's if you have basic, if you, stu if you ha studied English in your primary school, uh, in your high school, or later on, you will know. It's like basic English test, like just for them to show that you are able to understand, to receive, and to give information. After that, we had a group, just to see them how we will behave in the group, because you know that our job is based on the teamwork, and that, that is like most important thing in our job. So after that, I told them, oh, sorry, I need to leave because I need to go on the airport. <laughs> they said, what? What? After that, they gave us results and they accepted me first for the final interview. Like they uh -huh. said, okay, we're going to take you first for the final interview. So I got lucky that I was first. So they asked me, why did you make appointment same day to go to Germany? And same day I said, uh, it's not my fault. This was long time before because they really changed the date for the uh -huh. interview for Flynas, they changed the date. So they said, okay, they ask you the questions, why you apply for this job, what you gonna, what you wanna achieve in this company, how you think that you like a worker will, um, uh, how you think that this company will do good to you, how you will do good to this company. Like, uh, it was questions through, like, right? Yes, uh, exactly. Um, how you would be able to live with other nationalities? Uh, what is your opinion about Saudi Arabia? And that kind of the questions. Then later on, when I already went to the Germany after two weeks, uh, they told me that I'm accepted and they sent me job offers. So it was really like totally <laughs> accidentally that I got this job because I just went like support to my friend. And you got the job. <laughs> Yeah, but what yet. did you do then? Because at that time you were in Germany. Did you leave that job or they gave you some no, time? I, no, but because the uh, application for visa for Saudi Arabia took like three months and mm -hmm. my contract there was three months because I was going uh -huh. every three months to work then. So I finished everything. I came home from Germany and then like I had two weeks to get ready and go to Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. So all turned out to be good. <laughs> <laughs> it was quick, but it's good that in meanwhile you got that experience in Germany as well. Do you speak German? Well, I understand and speak, but I am not like that I can say pro. Yeah, but uh -huh. I can understand what are we tell, talking and I can understand. Well, of course, first that you learn is bad words. That was I, what <laughs> I learned as well, because in every language you first learn how to curse and that kind of things. But I understand, like I can have communication, but uh -huh. not like... Well, yeah, pro communication. Yeah. yeah, not like them, of course. Okay, then when you arrived in uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, they have a base in Riyadh, right? Uh, we have uh, three bases. We have mm -hmm. one base in Riyadh, one base in Dammam, and one base in Jeddah. 
So uh, did you have chance to choose where you want to be based or how it was? Yes, you can uh, like apply for which base you want. Like mm -hmm. uh, my training, I spent in Jeddah. Jeddah is really nice because they have sea. Uh, it's more, uh, it's really, really nice. It's just the problem is humidity. You live in Oman, so I think you know that. Know. But later on, I was sent to Riyadh and I'm happy that I stayed in Riyadh because Riyadh is really good base for operation and that yeah, that's the capital city and I checked they have like uh, 7 million people, you know, just in one yes. city and then I compared like in Oman, they are approaching to 5 millions, like population and then I'm thinking like whole Oman has less than Riyadh. <laughs> you should come visit one day so I can take you everything. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't know actually, I think we need visa for Saudi Arabia, I need to check but anyhow, who knows, maybe in future. Because it's not that popular, right? You can tell us a bit about Saudi Arabia, so... What is that popular? Most okay, people, Most of the people, they have opinion like Saudi Arabia, you know, it's conservative. Yes, that's true. That was my opinion because you see television, you see media and you see talking, but it was totally different situation. Like I was, to be honest, in the beginning, I was a bit scared because all of this media because TV, because this, because people saying, oh my God, Saudi Arabia, are you sure? It's for European, it's hard. But when you come there, it's totally different. Like I saw more people that are open minded that, and I saw in example, Balkan countries or in Europe, it's totally different. Like I was shocked for the next three months until I realized, okay, this is the Saudi Arabia that they are talking. Like you have a lot of things to see uh, a lot of cities, a lot of nice beaches, like uh, I went to Seychelles, I went to Mauritius, but then you go to, in one city, uh, Jazan, they have Island Farsan. It's like something so beautiful that you cannot believe that is in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. A lot of forests. Uh, uh, by the way, last year, uh, we had a Riyadh festival that all singers worldwide came like uh, uh -huh. David Guetta was there, Tyga, Travis Scott. It was like, and everyone was allowed to enter the country. The festival was three months. Like oh. you had box, uh, you, it was really, really nice. Like uh, it, and all people worldwide came there. So really like country open, you had winter land festival, including that. So the country really opened and it was not like that anymore. And Abaya now, like you know that abaya was mandatory to wear you don't have to wear abaya anymore when you go out you just need to wear decent clothes wow really the so i need to cover so, your shoulders right what are the rules just decent just these decent clothes that nothing is seen but you don't have to wear abaya or hijab anymore or niqab so wow. really the country opens so you can see ladies walking normally in the jeans and shirts so what about uh, what open. about local ladies uh, they can, they don't have to wear as well the abaya as long as it's decent clothes. Mm -hmm. But they tend to keep tradition or no? Uh, it depends. You can see the ones that are uh, more towards tradition and they, they can see the more that they are opening like with the country as well. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so basically like they are changing it depends on the areas and cities but mm -hmm. either way the country really like in these four years it totally changed like how is it on beginning like i was shocked that is open that much now is like 150 percent differently than it was uh -huh. four years ago like festivals singers big stages um one of the things that is still good in riyadh you have janadria festival that is mm -hmm. every year and that is like a cultural Saudi Arabia festival. You can see crafts uh, around the cities, like every city has their own crafts, their own traditions. And like, that is one of the famous things. It's really like, you can see all Saudi culture in one place. So it's really nice mm -hmm. to visit. In which month is that? Uh, it's uh, in October. And mm -hmm. this festival that was Riyadh festival, it was four months and mm -hmm. it, like it was 50, 15 million people came worldwide because the government allowed visas. So Visa everyone theater. wanted to come. Yes, everyone wanted to come to that festival to come. Because like world greatest names in the music, in the art, in the boxing, they were there. 
so it's uh, wow. really nice. Yeah, I think they are trying to bring more tourists as well. Yeah, because it's really nice country. There is really a lot of things to see when you want to explore. So mm -hmm. I think it will get better even more. It also it also depends on the person. You know, I have one friend and she was working in uh, Saudi Arabia. What's the name? Saudi Airlines, yeah. And she was so disappointed. She couldn't take it. So she ran away, she came back to Serbia when she had first annual leave, you know. So I think it also depends on the person and like what do you expect from the country, from the company and so on. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I agree. A lot of people, it depends on your look and what you find interesting. And mm -hmm. if you came just to collect money, okay, most of the people will just collect money and go. But while I'm here, I want to see everything. Mm -hmm. what country offers because I don't know will I be after one two years so I want to take every experience that I can have mm -hmm. to use the chance yeah okay let's go back uh, we skip that part about the training how long is the training in fly NAS and uh, which uh, aircraft do you fly okay our training lasts two uh, two and a half months mm -hmm. uh, of course safety first aid then uh, after that you have uh, you go to Bahrain or Jeddah it depends uh -huh. on practical uh -huh. so you do all that exercise and ditching uh -huh. and everything practically after that you have a training flight that's your first flight that you see then after that you have your line check mm -hmm. so it passes very fast from morning to eight to five, it's like office work day. Yeah. After every chapter, of course, you have a test to check your knowledge, then line check. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, which aircrafts I checked? Actually, you have Airbus 320, right? Airbus 320 to Airbus 319 and uh, finance says they want to uh, spread, they just uh, purchase for like 120 neo airbus t20 mm -hmm. so let's see what gets bigger <laughs> yeah the company will grow definitely and companies so it's like domestic and international low cost right yes and so, it was established on 2017 so we are really young wow, company but they really accomplished a lot like i'm not saying because it's my company but really like uh from 2017, we won three Sky Awards for the best leading low-cost company in the Middle East. World Trevor Award as well, three years in a row for the best low company. Then we won one for the best crew in the world. So <coughs> <laughs> that's enough <laughs> <coughs> for the best crew, of course. <laughs> so yeah, company really achieved a lot from 2007. So I'm really proud of them and I'm really happy to see them how they grow because they deserve. And one of the things, the best in the company, like in Riyadh base, you have only 400 people, like mm -hmm. let's say 400 people. And you always know with whom you fly. In these other uh -huh. major companies, you always have a crew who you see first time and you say, oh, okay. But for us, you already know you flew with that person before. So that is good. Like it's literally like family, honestly, uh -huh. you know the bad and good things about one person, you know what to expect, you know how your flight will go and flow. So I like that. That's good, yeah. Because you don't have so many crew at one place. And like for us, yes, also we're not that big company, but yes, like almost every flight I have new people. <laughs> They're like, okay, <laughs> you need to start everything from the beginning, you know, to leave the first impression. <laughs> yeah, but with, if you're flying with some, crew like that you know them it's much easier that's yes, true it's easier and more relaxed situation and atmosphere yeah i want to go back uh, I, because we skipped that part <laughs> uh, for the flying us uh, was the recruitment process through some agency or they came by uh, them i had an agency to be honest but uh, it depends on the country for bosnia yeah, there was one agency Mm -hmm. that uh, recruit us as well. So uh, we end up uh, giving three months, uh, a certain mm -hmm. amount of the money for that agency that rec uh, recruit us. But like uh -huh. example, other countries like uh, Macedonia, uh, Albania, they didn't have to go to that process. Uh -huh. Like most of the girls, they didn't 
hired to that agency. Like in Bosnia, we got lucky that we had that <laughs> agency. So three months we gave like, uh, I think first month was $800, $800 and then $1,000 uh -huh. in three months. Yeah. Oh, okay. But like uh, Tunisian girls, they had to pay immediately that amount for that Before agency. they got salaries, imagine. Yeah, that was sad, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but at least, okay, you knew what to expect, right? It was not, it yes. was not like sudden information. Oh my God, I need to give money, yeah. This <laughs> is the difference when you have through the agency or no. So some girls got lucky, but next time when they came to Bosnia, there was no agency. They got hired immediately without paying. Even for Roman Air, like first time and they did recruitment in Serbia, those girls, they did it through some agency. But then when you I did didn't? it in Bosnia, no. After that I did it with, in Bosnia. I went for uh, my assessment day in Bosnia. And we didn't Ah, oh, hey, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was in Sarajevo. Yeah. How was it, by the way? Ah, you can check my story. <laughs> okay, was, sorry, I'm asking how was it to visit? Ah, you mean Sarajevo? Yeah. Ah, I like it. It was not my first time, of course. I love, yeah, come on. Wherever I go, I yeah, go find nice. something that I love. <laughs> I am that type of person, you know, I'm looking for positive sides of the city and place. Yeah, we know by your stories about Oman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like them, huh? You have never yes. been to Oman, right? Yeah, I went two times, by the way. Where? What did you visit? I went to Muscat. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> just, just, I just stayed in the Muscat for three or four days. Uh -huh. I had some weddings, so a wedding was in the Muscat, so I stayed three, four days for the wedding preparation. It was traditional wedding or? Uh, it was expat wedding, so uh, yeah. Okay. They were in ho one hotel, they make big weddings. So, yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> but you didn't have a chance to see a lot, right? No, but I'm planning to go because flying as this year after all of this Corona pass, they open Oman flights, so I'm planning to go. Mm -hmm. Because it's visa on arrival and it's easy to come and it's not that far. Yeah. By your you story, can... I saw a lot of things to visit. Even you can uh, come with Oman Air. By the way, we met each other on my flight. You remember? <laughs> when I was operating yes, I, but... from Riyadh to Muscat and then later on, because you went to Bali, right? And then from coming back from Jakarta to Muscat again. <laughs> that was yeah, funny. <laughs> and I said to my boyfriend that time, this girl, she has to be for Balkan because we uh -huh. got Balkan girls, they have that power that they can see the face and you know that you are a girl from Balkan. And then he, I was shy and then he asked you, are you from Balkan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Okay, so now I want to ask you because uh, I heard like in um, Saudi uh, Saudi Airlines they have. I want to ask about accommodation for in your company because there they have like uh, two girls in uh, one room as I managed to get from <laughs> Google. So can you tell yeah. me how is the situation in Flynas? Okay, for us, you have your own room, your own toilet, and our accommodation is really good. We have a, like compound, and that is like villas, and only it's crew villas, okay? Mm -hmm. So only crew, sometimes, so uh, not and we have building. office there. It's not a building, right? so it, it's, no, not it's not building. building, it's compound, compound yeah. with villas, and accommodation is really good. And uh, we never live with anyone else. Like I know in Saudi Arabia, because I have a friend, living there, they were sharing rooms with two or three girls during the training, then they waited for to be transferred so they can have their own room because I don't think so, that is good because we all need our rest because of different rosters and that kind of thing. So thank God for us, we don't have that issues. We have swimming pools because really it's five stars compounds, honestly. Uh, gym, uh, sauna, like luxury, oh. like especially when you come from Balkan and you have all of that, like, where I am, like Hollywood, Hollywood, literally. That, that means that we were poor before, but whatever. So when you come, you lose yourself like, what the hell is this? Wonderland. So yeah, for, so for three months, I was like uh, living in American dream. So, yeah. Crazy. You're funny. Even when I see your stories on Instagram, I'm laughing. But we will come to that point. I will ask you about that. Okay, I want to ask you, uh, do you have layovers? 
Okay, yes, we have layovers, because, um, but most of the layovers are seasonal because our flights are most domestic flights mm -hmm. in the countries. But we have layovers uh, India, Pakistan, Vienna, Salzburg, uh, well, uh, we had Turkey as well. Sarajevo, no? Uh, yes, Sarajevo layover, exactly. but Sarajevo is from the last year. We started flying Sarajevo from last year. Wow. So we have Sarajevo layover as well. Mostly like this seasonal long flight. Yeah, it depends. Uh -huh. Okay, how is your experience with uh, layovers in India and Pakistan? Well, because I am explorer in India, Pakistan, okay, uh, my last flight in Pakistan was Lahore. Uh -huh. And uh, when we out from the bus, every, everyone from the Pakistanis are taking pictures on their phone. <laughs> like, I really felt like Pamela Anderson, like, this is my day. <laughs> I'm like, they're all passing and I'm... Like, you know, after long flights, how your makeup goes black down and how you're still trying to smile after you said goodbye, Master Lama, to 300 people, 200 people. Like, you are going out from the hotel, it's early morning, and they're all recording. Like, <laughs> like I, it, first of all, that was really nice because their people are like, I don't know, like, people are so friendly. And I was shocked that you have a lot of places to visit in Lahore. Like, mountains what, what thing that i liked the most was the people they are really friendly like my layover was 40 hours oh so nice we spent to see to see the city we saw the this major mosque that they have there uh we went on one market that was traditional market for them so it was really nice if you want to explore there is a lot of things and if you want to be a negative person in your life you can sit in the hotel room and look at one spot so to be honest, I really, li I really like it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, still the picturing of us, it was the best moment, like, hello. <laughs> and the really India? friendly. Where did you have a layover in India? Uh, in India, I, I had uh, Calicut. Uh-huh, even me. <laughs> really? <laughs> Uh -huh. Did you like that? Two times. I love it, really. But uh, for us, we had like just 24 hours. I mean, just. And uh, it depends on the crew because somehow I didn't feel safe to go alone, alone. If I go alone, I could go close by to hotel. <laughs> I don't go that far. Yeah, but for yeah, me, I love stuff. to try the fruits, you know, the local stuff they're selling on the streets. I mean fruits. Yeah, it takes a lot because I believe that most of the tradition you're going to learn from the street and the street uh -huh. people, honestly. If you want to see any country go on the streets, go into people and you will learn a lot. So mm -hmm. I agree with you. It's nice to visit. It's a bit change. And of course, again, what is happening in India, Pakistan, it's not safe. But when you see and you go, it's totally different. But yeah. still, I don't go at night time anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Of Just course. safety. <laughs> Daytime only. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> we understand each other, clearly. Okay, now, uh, you already, you can tell us now about your growth in uh, Flynas, because now you're working as a supervisor. So you're four years in that company. You can share how it was like from the time you start working in economy and basically how is the procedure to progress? Well, to be honest, uh, you have to have a clean record, of course. No, no shows, no late sign-ons. You don't have, uh, you, you have, you don't, you're not allowed to have any disciplinary action against you, and your safety knowledge have to be good. So, uh, they are changing constantly. Like first time when I reached, it was like that you need to have two experience of flying in that company. Later on, when I applied, it was one year and a half. So I reached one year and a half and I, because I was planning to work only two years, to be honest, and then go back home because I had a love back home. So I thought that would be a big romance. So I said, okay, I'm going to stay two years, travel, see, learn, and then I'm, I'm going back home. But I went on that interview. I applied. I thought, okay, they're going to accept me because there is senior crew who's flying 11, 12 years, like I don't have a chance. Oh. But thank God, they called me, they gave me um, office duty for that day. We had a test. First, it was like safety procedure test, standard procedures from the company. 
uh, then we had first aid test, then of course grooming from the company. When you finish all of that, you will get the test results. And then after you pass, like all, already like 50% of the people uh, didn't pass. So it was 50% mm -hmm. of us left. Then after that, you have the final interview. They give you like three subjects to prepare presentation or um, just talk about that. So I passed that. Like safety subject or what? Uh, it, yes, it's safety subject. Like in that time, we had a new version of our uh, safety manual in that time. Mm -hmm. So for I took that subject, like what is the difference between old manual uh -huh. and this manual? So I, you have found the differences, talk about them, what is the difference, what is updated, what is expelled from that. So I talked about that, made presentation, waited for two weeks, and they told me, congratulations, you are accepted to become a person. So, yeah, so I didn't went home after two years. Yeah. So you yeah. stayed and now you were, you were four uh, years, yeah. Four years, imagine. So, like two years and a half, something like that, you're working as a person, right? Yes. And how is that comparing to. Uh, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest, first of all, I, was, I thought, I thought, oh my God business class it will be more stressed like everything is on you in the case of any emergency situation because i was i was thinking like i was that person who in the case of anything i'm gonna open slides and jump first and said passenger <laughs> pushed me away so when you became a person it's totally different because you cannot do that you cannot say passenger pushed me in the case of emergency situation so i went down first on the slide so it was really more stress, more responsibility, like for maybe two months until you learn your position. But later on, you, you realize it depends on you how your flight will go. Like if you want your flight to be smooth, it will be smooth. Because I believe that what you give to the person, you will get back. Like before, to be honest, I had some seniors who are really unhappy about their life, who are seniors who want to give you a hard time. I don't know, did you, do you have that situation in your company that someone just wants to give you a hard time because they are unhappy about their lives? Sorry, girl, resign, this job is not for you. So I had that situation, so I realized that, that people are really unhappy about themselves and what you give to your crew, you will receive. If you come grumpy and start shouting and being bossy, nose up and everything, I am supervisor I'm person you will get as well same from the crew no one will respect you so thank God in these two and a half years I never had any problem with any of my crew on the board or anything so I thank God really so when you get used to it on the job and more responsibility you will be okay it's stressful on yeah, the beginning by time you, you are more relaxed like you know what to do and what what are the procedures that you need to follow but can you tell me, because uh, as I can see, you think like everything is starting, I guess, from briefing, right? If you yeah. have good briefing, how is your briefing as a supervisor? Should I lie? Maybe someone from my company will watch. <laughs> no. Uh, first of all, we do sign on as usually. No, then I go to take the uh, timings and altitude from the captain for an announcement to check is everything okay with the aircraft, do we have any discrepancies in the aircraft concerning the aircraft. After that, I go do a briefing with my crew. I tell them about aircraft registration, about how many passengers we are expecting, what is the time and altitude, of course. Then I remind them about the safety uh, procedures in the company, about first aid procedures in the company, about CRM, how they should respect each other, caring is sharing, Mm -hmm. and that kind of things to stay positive on the flight and then the refreshment of the knowledge to ask a few questions about first aid or safety procedures that's already yeah what do you do if they don't know the answers usually they know thank god i always fool with the crew that usually they know but if they don't know uh i'm asking other crew members to remind them a bit about the uh -huh. questions so yeah. to read it then repeat it again so yeah Okay. Everyone can ha be scared and forgot because most of the people, they are flying as well longer time. So if you have two in the morning flight, uh, sometimes I don't know my name. So what I'm expecting for him to tell me what is procedure when someone has cardiac arrest. So it's normal to get a bit shocked and stunned in the two in the morning. So yeah. But did you have some um, like unpleasant situation with any of crew? 
With the crew, I didn't have, honestly. I, I never faced anything bad with the crew, like, because I believe that, as I already told you, it's in Riyadh, it's only like 400 of us. So mm -hmm. most of that crew, I know, like what is their bad things, what is their good things, on what to work, what to improve, what to try to avoid, and that kind of thing. So I really didn't. With the crew, no. Like mostly, like uh, their emotional disturbance, they broke up with the boyfriend, girlfriend's habibi, uh. <laughs> that kind of thing. So. And then you yeah. have what to talk about on the jump seat, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is the reason. The jump seat. It's uh, we sh they should give us extra money for being shrinks on the board. Honestly. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, but I want to ask you: Is there something uh, that you don't like when you see, like, that your crew is doing with passengers or with each others? What's uh, can what, something what please? I no. <laughs> what I don't like when uh, we have the situation that some crew who are more senior than other crew, like other positions, and they are together sitting in the app. They are being bossy. They are giving orders like it's, I am in this company 10 years. Or when they are expecting to other crew to do their job as well. So for oh, me, yeah. what thing I cannot stand is laziness. Because if one crew is lazy and he's avoiding work, then all the flight is going to be a disaster because teamwork, teamwork is the most important thing in our job. So mm -hmm. that is the thing that I cannot stand because I, when I was flying like a junior in the AF, I had that kind of the people who they expect that you're going to do their job as well because they are seniors. So laziness is one of the things that I cannot really stand. Okay, I understand that thing. Okay, I will, not... the will understand the pain. I will not continue. Okay, uh, would you like to share some um, story, situation, or if you had some first aid, safety, security thing? Well, I had one situation, but it didn't went good. I had one passenger, uh, she came with a cabin wheelchair on the flight. It was uh -huh. to Cairo, uh, yes, from Riyadh to Cairo. She was in the cabin wheelchair. Uh, she was traveling with the family. We landed to Cairo, everything was okay. Then her husband said that she's not moving, that she thinks she is dead. <gasps> so uh, it was trauma. Me and her husband took her to the forward where it was the bigger space. I checked her pulse. She was not breathing. I started doing CPR to that lady. Uh, I told my crew to bring the AED to start with the uh, AED. When, I, when we uh, established the AED, you know how it's procedure for the AED, we got that command that there is no circulation so we start, had to start doing CPR again. Unfortunately, lady, um, when the medical team came, the lady was already dead. But what we didn't know, that lady was on the fourth stage of the cancer. So she just wanted to go home to die back home. So that was like the biggest stress of my life, like seeing her there and trying like we did CPR like maybe for 15 minutes I was the first one who saw it so I was the one who was doing it like 15 minutes like taking care that she starts breathing again and then not to break her ribs so, so many things about the life and what is important and the worst part like she was 20 like 27 only and she was with two kids and husband and her mother so oh, like no. that moment after that fight I said okay I'm gonna resign this is not for me like what is happening? Like, I know I saw many things before while I was working. Well, I had practical on my college as well. We, I had pediatric neurology. I had that subjects on my college. So I saw a lot of things, but this you think, okay, it's your fault. You couldn't save her. But later on, then we figure out that she was on the fourth stage of the cancer and that she just wanted to die home. So that was one of the things that, uh, it was really hard and bad for me. Like I, I was in the state of shock, like next two or three weeks. Did you fly after that or they gave you like... Uh, no, I didn't fly. Thank God I went on vacation back home. Uh -huh. The company was really nice to me. They told me, take as much as time you want. They, like, do you need psychological help or something? Like, they were really, really uh, helpful. So I'm really grateful for that. Mm -hmm. What about safety? Safety, thank God, nothing happened. Like, thank God I, I was happy because in our company, really, safety is our main priority. Like, everything is important, but for safety, they are working the most. So, thank God I didn't have anything until now. 
Okay, great. I got lucky. I got lucky. Thank you. <laughs> you know, when you say something, then uh, like, uh, you know, like in our back home, how we say, like, don't say it again, it will happen. It will happen. Yeah, that's the reason. So never say, oh, right. never say never. So let's let's not. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, what is the uh, best thing that this job like provides you, or and what is the worst thing about this job? The best thing about this job is uh, people that you meet, mm -hmm. different nationalities and different cultures that you meet as well. ID that you get like a cabin crew that you can travel everywhere with uh, the major companies. So you when anytime you have your days off, your family. Uh, your family members can use it as well, so it's really good. You can see everything and paying only taxes for your tickets. Mm -hmm. Well, like our company has like major companies as well included in ID. So mm -hmm. you can go anywhere you want to see. We have like every month four days off. We can maximum have uh, eight days off, so you can swap your days off. So that's good. So for eight days, you can go to Seychelles, like example, for very really cheap. So that is really good because you can see a lot of countries as well oh, wait, wait, wait. now i want to interrupt you so you have eight days off in total in roster you in can one. have maximum eight days total uh -huh. you have four you get originally four in your roster but you can swap it with other crew to have eight maximum in one month uh -huh, like in a row like example, right? together yes in a row yeah mm -hmm. And like, for example, if my days off are ending like in the last day of month, let's say 30, and I request one, two, three, four, I can uh -huh. have 12 days. So ah, yeah, like, okay. you can Understand. combine like small vacation. Wow, that's great. For us, we used to have like, uh, we could request three days off in a row. And then what we were doing like three days off, we request at the end of the month, three days off at the beginning of the month. So we make six, but we cannot have like 10, no way. Yeah, for us, we can combine, that, that's good. And most of the group is willing to give you like your request for him this month, next month, you can request mm -hmm. for them, so it's good. Yeah, because you said you're like a family, you help each other, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. 99% of the people there is always some you know how it goes. <laughs> okay, so what is the bad thing about this job? Bad thing about this job, no private life. It's easy for you, you have husband. But for uh -huh. us girls, it's hard to maintain professional life, especially when your husband or your partner is not with you. So we are jealous on you, but we're gonna talk later about our jealousy. <laughs> uh, not everyone got lucky like you. Uh, no, you really don't have that much time for personal life. So don't expect you're gonna have that lovely personal life. Uh, sleeping cycle is really bad because you know how our rosters, one day you have morning, one day you have evening. So like you need six months only to adjust that you're not gonna sleep. Then later on when you don't sleep 48 hours and you feel like you're literally drunk, you realize your body can handle it. And after the first 48 hours of not sleeping, you realize, okay, but you're gonna get crazy. Like you're gonna spend most of your vacation trying to sleep, sleep. This <laughs> Corona came really good because I forgot how it's wake up at 10 in the morning. Like you get shocked that you sometimes you slept and you, then you realize I appreciate the days when I had times to sleep. So because for us, like we have minimum rest 10 hours sometimes, sometimes 14 hours, sometimes like, we have four sectors. I don't know how it goes in your company, but we have four sectors. In one day, uh huh. Yes, like you go to Riyadh, to Jeddah, then from Jeddah to Riyadh, then from Riyadh to Jeddah, then Jeddah from Riyadh. Yeah. So for it's me, hard. it was four hard. Four times take off and landing, four times you do boarding, disembarkation. Yes. And on the beginning, like for me, that was like the hardest part. So sleeping, yes. This, of course, circles. We're not gonna ever have that beautiful face. I was really beautiful before. Come on. But you're gonna have circle. Your skin has become a driver. You need to go to gym because you're, I know you're going to gym, I saw your post and I saw your body, so good job. You have time for that. You really need to be active to stand that pressure in the aircraft, to stand that flying, 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 flying. So you need to take care more about your health. You cannot stay home and watch Netflix and rest when you come from the flight. So that is like, 
you will totally have different habits. Maybe you were active more before. So for you, it was okay, but you have to have different habits than you had before you became a cabin crew mm -hmm. because your health really is important. So, yeah. Mostly you that's... Have, basically, you have problem with sleeping. The first six months, I was disaster. Like, I couldn't get used to it from sleeping because uh, my father is from Comandante Negro, and you know what they say at Puerto Negro. We like to sleep. We are chilling people, okay? So for me, it was really hard to adjust that I need to wake up at two in the morning and have four sectors and stay till five in the afternoon. So sleeping was a problem, but later on, you get used to it, of course. Your cycle gets used to it. But is my soul still tired? Yes. Okay, I understand. But for us now, because I didn't have any flight for three months, like for me, my basic pattern is back to normal. I think now if they call me for some flight, I will have a big problem. <laughs> yeah, that happened to us as well. They get, uh, my first flight after all of this was at two in the morning. So it was good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how long did you have break now during Corona? Uh, two and a half months. Uh -huh. And then you started... Flying. Yes, we started oh. flying domestic from the last month mm -hmm. and still international flights, just the reputation flights are currently mm -hmm. flying. Okay. I want to ask you something else. Like uh, how many, let's say, flying or duty hours? I don't know how you calculate in your company. You have per uh, one month. Okay, for our, uh, we have our basic and the rest uh, is uh, flying hours. Like mm -hmm. we, it depends on your roster, it depends what, what month, on what season is, because like mm -hmm. the highest season is always summer because everyone has vacations and they are traveling. So June, July, August, uh, you can have 100 something hours. And there, that uh, depends on that or flying? Mostly flying. And uh -huh. uh, remember that is mostly domest domestic destination. So that means that your roster is overcrowded. And you can swap your flight if you want more money, of course, and more flying hours. So you can swap it. Mm -hmm. With someone who doesn't want. <laughs> yes. Who wants to someone stay? Someone who is tired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I want to ask you, what would you recommend to people who would like to join aviation? To join aviation, to be sure that they want to, because how ma no matter how many things you get in this job, of course, you're going to get a lot of money. You're going to meet a lot of people. You're going to see a lot of things to make sure that they are really ready to change their life completely. Mm -hmm. To be prepared that they're going to be left alone. Let's all get lucky again, like you with your husband. We're not going to talk about it. It's still a painful subject. That they're going to have depressions, that they're going to have a crisis, that they're going to have emotional breakdowns in the beginning, especially the people who spend most of their life with them in the circle of the family. Mm -hmm. That they have to prepare that they are uh, themselves against all the world, that things will not be always as they expect it to be, that being flight attendant is not only seeing what was on the TV. So to get prepared mentally and physically for mm -hmm. the challenges. But they're going to learn a lot. So I would recommend to apply as long as you are ready and you finished all that you back home. Because most of the people, they left their jobs and then later on they realized that is not for them. So be 100% sure that this is for you before you go into it. Mm -hmm. Did you have that type of crisis and um, like depression? Yeah, and... uh, to be honest, first two months I was crying like this. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes, I was calling my mother, my father back home, like, I cannot do this. Like, I, I was, uh, when I was 17, no, when I was 18, when I went to college, I went to other city, and that was like five hours away from my hometown. So I was not like that close to my family, but uh, I came alone. I didn't have any friend that I came, because that's my friend that I told you from the beginning, oh, she, she didn't, didn't get pass. the job, so she didn't get accepted. So most of the Bosnian girls who came, they were like, they know each other, they are high school friends, they are college friends or something. So everyone has anyone. And all of them, they got opportunity to live together. But for mm -hmm. me, I got one girl that I don't want to mention her name. That girl is like nightmare girl. 
So <laughs> she was as well giving me a hard time on the beginning. So like I was in really deep crisis, like two, three months, I regretted. I said, no, I cannot do this. This is not for me. Like that feeling that you are alone. I don't know. You feel like, why well, I did it to myself. I had bread to eat back home as well. So yeah. <laughs> How did you overcome that situation? Uh, I, uh, it just passes. You realize, okay, this is my life now. And I really believe that God would not give you anything that you are not able to handle. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what situation comes to your life, no matter how it's hard, I believe that you are harder than that. So that you will overcome it. So I don't regret. I never regretted coming after that crisis. Just like time and that you realize adjust and adapt and okay, this is your life. Now you wanted this. So if you're already in the hell, because I was thinking I would walk through it. So I never regret it. That's nice because actually you uh, grow up from every crisis, right? Like you became uh, bigger and stronger. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, that hard period passed. It was just beginning adjustment. And but I'm now you're fine, right? Back home, so. Yes, now I'm fine. Now you're completely yeah. used to. Now it's like home, second home, honestly. Okay. Now, one quick game that I didn't tell you. <laughs> wow, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, oh, it's easy. Uh, I will just tell you like one word and you need to tell me like short in few sentences or how you want in few words. Um, what is the association for you? Okay. okay. So I tell you something, you tell me what comes to your mind first. Okay. Uh, Montenegro. <laughs> Montenegro. My father comes, uh, is from Montenegro. Half of my family is from Montenegro. Beautiful mountains, beautiful sea, beautiful people. Okay. Visit Montenegro. <laughs> That's the advertisement. Huh? Uh, fly deck. People. Fly deck. Uh, during boarding, <laughs> during the boarding, coffee, tea. <laughs> <laughs> during yeah, the really nice. During the boarding, the worst moments when you have when someone asks you for the coffee, tea. But to be honest, we have really good, nice fly deck. So, and most of them I really consider as my friends. So, all all positive about fly deck. And of course, landing and take of taking the temperature, checking how long to descend. First association. When are we descending? <laughs> okay. Tuzla. Uh, Tuzla is I am, I am from other city, but people from Bosnia and Herzegovina don't get angry. Tuzla is the best city in Bosnia and Herzegovina. That is so nice city of nice people, good university, good education, uh, best, <laughs> best, best lakes that you need to visit. Panonica, so please, when you go to Bosnia, visit Tuzla, because that is the thing that you need to see. Tuzla is city of the salt, so any salt that you want to take or bring, there is it. A lot of nice things, please visit Tuzla. Good Cevapi, okay, Visako has better Cevapi, but still, Tuzla, you have to visit. That was another advertisement. <laughs> yeah, you see, I'm using your YouTube channel to uh, improve the tourism in uh, Montenegro and Bosnia. Montenegro and Bosnia, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, boarding. Uh, boarding means constant smiling for us, okay? Uh -huh. so, boarding, always smiling. What, yeah, one of the things when you mentioned the boarding, what's this job? Uh, bad side that you always have to laugh. Even if you don't feel laughing, you have your own problems laughing. So boarding is always laughing and your first approach your observation of the passengers because i believe that after one year in the company you can observe what kind of the passengers you're gonna have on the flight and what kind of the uh, people yeah. you're gonna have on your flight for me that is like the moment of the truth moment of the observation <laughs> and moment where you make your first impression and the moment when you see will your passengers will travel with you again so smile smile like tomorrow doesn't exist <laughs> okay, Bali. <laughs> My heartbreak. <laughs> I cannot oh. believe the jails that 
uh, one of my best travels with one of the best companies in the world, Oman Air. By the way, I would always travel with Oman Air on any other destination, not only that crew is nice. I, you know that I had that unpleasant situation with one of the passengers. I don't oh, know yeah, if you remember. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about it, I'm getting red. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that is the moment, that was my first time to travel with Oman Air and after that I realized I traveled more times with Oman Air because that is really good. By the way, I traveled to Zanzibar to Oman, oh, with Oman Air like, uh -huh. in November, yes. After that I realized I'm going to use, first thing first, it's Oman Air. Like I would always travel with Oman Air after that. The seats, comfort, crew, crew was really nice, not only because it was you, it was really helpful. Uh, one of the best destinations to visit, culture, water park, one of the best water park, rice fields, and of course, heartbreak, so let's not talk about it. <laughs> oh, you better stop. <laughs> Next one is landing. Uh, landing, okay, you, uh, to be honest, during the landing and takeoff, I always say a prayer because I believe that you need God. If you're a flight attendant, you really need God because you're 30,000 above ground level and you always need God with you. So to be honest, first thing that I, before I do my mental review of what can happen during the landing takeoff because mm -hmm. I have a procedure and I just get used to it to imagine and create situation during the landing the takeoff, like something will happen, fuselage, crash or anything. I pray, so my landing and takeoff, my first association on landing and takeoff is always prayer yeah. to a God for safe landing, that everything will be okay when we land during the approach. So, wow. first association, prayer. <laughs> Interesting, that's the first time that I got this answer. <laughs> yeah, I first one, to be honest, during takeoff and landing, first thing it's prayer, then mental review. Okay, and then um, love problems. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then love problems. Love problems are on the cruise after the service and everything. Uh, okay. <laughs> then I have uh, makeup. Yeah. To be honest, I never put that many makeup before I started the company. To be honest, I didn't even have my ears pierced. So when I got this job, oh. they told me you have to pierce your ears because we have to wear this um, earrings. like pearl, uh -huh. yes, earrings and everything. So I didn't have my ears pierced. So. When you mentioned makeup, uh, like I need to adjust that I made the holes in my ears because of this job. So that was one of the things as well that I mentioned. Makeup, uh, thank God this job is based on makeup to be natural. But to be honest, I never put that ma many foundations because on the longer flights, I know that you're going to do retouch on your makeup, but still your makeup needs to be makeup that will last longer. So I'm trying to base my looks on more natural looks, mm -hmm. something that's going to look fresh even after smiling for 12 hours so it was it annoying at the beginning yes but then later when you get used to it you have five things that you need to eyelash uh, eyeliner mascara li red lipstick nail polish has to be there some foundation and that's all okay yeah but i usually take one hour for that to be honest so every really? time before my pickup time i wake up for like two hours yeah before Wow, I do my makeup 15 minutes, but it's, you know, just the basic. You fast, you fast. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, safety. Safety, constant to worry about everything that can happen. And I'm really a person who has big imagination. So sometimes when I have the longer flight, I'm concerning what, what will happen, what will happen. So... And to be honest, like the safety is really important to me, not because of the camp company rules, it's because I told you already. Your life. Mm. I, yes, I'm constantly stressed that something will happen. So like safety is for me something that I need to have in my small finger, like mm -hmm. constant reading, constant repeating safety procedures. So that is first thing when you say safety, it's manual and me reading and repeating constantly. <laughs> Drills, okay. drills, jump and slide, go this way. Yeah, yeah, like I think even if we wake up in the middle of the night, we will know these drills. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Pull the pilot back, exactly. So, yeah, <laughs> like that is something that is always on your mind. Before knowing your name, your last name, your address, someone wakes you up. That is drill for that. So, yeah. 
they filled our brain with safety procedures. <laughs> okay, uh, next one is uh, uniform. First thing that crossed my uniform is, like I said, so many bad situations that happened with my uniform and my shirt during the, the flight, like juices spilled and everything. So first thing that you mentioned my uniform is to be neat and clean because it's really hard when you have four sectors and when you have long flights for your uniform to be crystal clean and everything. And it, when you wear the uniform immediately, it starts stress that you are ambassador of your company, that you need to behave totally different how you behave in your personal life. So wearing uniform is start where you start literally your day because when you go outside in your uniform, you have to start behaving on the rules. So uniform mm -hmm. means rules, totally, totally. No more joking, no more fun. <laughs> now you are like, okay. <laughs> Next thing, what I told you in Pakistan when they took a picture, it's like a Pope waving. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, and the last one is seat pocket. Uh, seat pocket. Ah, first thing that you say, seat pocket, safety card, and is it clean? And is there something in it? Is it then any lost item from the passenger? Because every flight, last four years, I had passenger leaving mobile phone, credit cards, wallets, passports. Like once we had to return because we landed to Turkey and one passenger left his passports and we are all, all on our way to Riyadh. So we had to go back to the field <laughs> to give him back his passport. So oh, yeah. pocket means that always something is lost. It's like, you know, that magician hat. Like every time you open, you're gonna find something. It is something. Because I found a fish, real fish in the water. Yeah, don't ask, don't ask. No, really? <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's like a mag magician hat where you always open and find something during the security check. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I understand. Now I want to ask you for the end, uh, what are your plans for future? regarding this job? Uh, to be honest, I want to get more knowledge about everything. So maybe I'm planning to apply for some instructor position because I already wow. took the, uh, I already took this uh, American Heart Association that was provided by our company. It was to be first aid uh, instructor. So I'm planning mm -hmm. to apply for the future position to be first aid instructor including my background so that is one of the possibilities that can happen but to be honest currently i'm still happy with flying mm -hmm. so we're gonna see what day brings like i'm basing myself to enjoy currently at this moment but do i have plans to continue working at this company yes i do and the biggest lie is when you say okay i'm gonna only stay one year because i believe that when you start flying you cannot get used to it on the office job and you're boring daily retur return because once you tasted what they say, once you tasted the flying, your life totally changed. So I'm hoping that the future will bring even better things because thank God I got lucky so many times. I have positive view because positive vibe, positive life, you know how it goes. So hoping that what I dream it will achieve. So let us see currently basing myself on one day has goes waiting for this corona to pass because this corona like is stuck behind everything yeah like it's totally changed our plans and views so like i'm hoping that i'm gonna apply and prove i want to take more courses of course from yata as well i want to apply for like that instructor position that i already told you so Mm -hmm. Let us see. Like just to improve and educate myself more. Like yeah, to prepare. You never know what will happen and which yeah, door will get open. Brings. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I wish you all the best, and thank, thank you, you so for, much for uh, sharing this. your stories and your positive energy. Uh, like I can feel it through camera. <laughs> You're so funny. Thank you so much. I hope that uh, I didn't took a long, 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 long time to explain all because I was a bit nervous and a bit, a bit excited, to be honest. <laughs> so thank you so much for invite. Thank you as well for this wonderful energy that I felt it on first flight. That's the reason I sent my boyfriend to approach him. So, 
thank you so much. It was really nice and I really enjoyed it. And I wish you all the best with this YouTube channel you. because I really think it's going to be great success because it's really great idea. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for helping me to grow this channel. <laughs> I'm okay. going to share it post heart. Don't worry, <laughs> after this it's going. <laughs> Would you like to add something or to ask something for the end? No, I'm just uh, hoping that uh, after you reach 1 million subscribers, you're going to call me on the party. Okay? okay. No, then I will call you for another interview the, where you will share your uh, instructor experience. <laughs> and where we laugh about things, what I said, ha ha ha, how young we were, ha ha ha. Yes. Okay, so I'm expecting that will happen till the end of this year after Corona passes, so we can party in a month. Oh, that's so fast. <laughs> and okay. so I can meet your better half as well. Better half. Uh -huh. Yeah, hopefully. You will have chance in the future. So you Thank you so good. much. <laughs> thank you once again. We so can take to the audience and thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions for Ivana or me, you can leave them in the comments below this video. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.